Ring ring cling, I'm sal. Ring ring shring, ka e i la ring. Ha sa ka ha la ring, sa ka la ring. Sal I'm cling ring shring. Aum. Text nine. Shabd gnana nupati vastu shunyo vikalpaha. Verbal delusion, vikalpa, follows from words having no corresponding reality. Text 10. Abhava pratyaya lambana vritir nidra. Sleep, nidra, is a vritti that embraces the feeling of voidness. Namaste. So, we have often commented on words that have no correspondence in reality, such as, for example, countries. What is a country? It's just a line some idiot drew on a map what is a corporation? It's just a bunch of fancy papers that people sign and make agreements among themselves. What are titles? Huh? You are now the managing director of the Quality Enhancement Division of Puba Industries Incorporated. What does that mean? It's just abstraction piled upon abstraction and it's ultimately meaningless. And yet, someone who's promoted into a position suddenly changes his relationships with all the people around him. And he starts acting like the managing director. Huh? He can hire and fire people. And people actually believe him. This is the really funny part. <laughs> You hang a title on somebody and all of a sudden everybody changes their relationship to him too. So it's reciprocal delusion. <laughs> all these things are just words that have no corresponding reality even in the dream of Jagrat, the world full of multitude of objects. So why do people believe in these things? It's just this is amazing to me. I remember one time I had a girlfriend and we were getting along great until one day we were having dinner and she brought up, you know, patriotism and the United States of America and all this stuff. And I said, United States of America is just an abstraction. It doesn't really exist. It's just a line on the map. And all that, you know, gave her the whole explanation. And she started looking at me like I was from freaking Mars. <laughs> you see, people believe in these illusions. And not only do they believe in them, they invest in them a tremendous amount of care and egotism and plans and even money and time and service and their, their hard-earned love. Huh? They give to these things that don't really exist. It's just pouring from the empty into the void, as the saying goes. These bodies, these minds, these personalities, these individualities, these are all illusion. But at least they're based on something physically real, you know? <laughs> something like a corporation is just a bunch of papers. It's, it's just insane. It's insane. The whole world is insane following these verbal designations that have no reality. 
Vikalpa. Kalpa means talk. And vikalpa means literally bad words or bad speech. So what to do? Everyone has belief in a religion and a political system and an economic system. And all these things are simply abstractions. At least back in the days when we had gold coins, there was some physical reality connected to money. Now, it's just a number on a computer screen. It has really no meaning at all. Only the meaning that we believe it has. So this is such a loaded word, belief. Huh? It means to take an abstraction and act as if it's real and then base all our actions and decisions and even feelings and perceptions on this unreality. It's madness. It's insane. And yet people live their whole lives according to these isms and anities. Huh? <laughs> Inanities. <laughs> so... A person who is on the spiritual path doesn't accept all these things. You see, this is why someone who is really on the path doesn't belong to any group. Because what is a group? It's another abstraction. What you really have is like people in a room, right? There is no such thing as a group. Uh, you can't pick it up by, by its handle and walk off with it. It's not a real, it's an unreal, confirmed. <laughs> so this unreality permeates our entire society. Is there any wonder why it's such a mess? You have all these people running around like chickens with their heads cut off, not thinking about it but blindly declaring their belief and allegiance to these abstractions. Of course the world is a mess. Of course the world is nuts. It's insane. This is a vritti. Vritti means a modification of what? Of the original consciousness. So now the, the vrittis are the most crazy. I mean, sorry, the... Vikalpa is the most crazy vritti because it posits the existence of something that's simply a word. It has no actual reality. Yeah, maybe somebody wrote a book or a specification or a declaration or a constitution or a Bible or, or something huh? about this particular ism, this belief, this abstraction. But that's just a book. And those are just words. And you can assign any meaning to them that you like. And people do all the time. That's why there are spin doctors. That's why there is alternate facts. That's why there is fake news. That's why there's deep fakes. Huh? Now with computers, we can really go crazy. <laughs> Psychotic. <laughs> and create images, a realistic image of something that never happened. Well, it happened to me. Some of my ex-students who failed at spiritual life, when I resigned from being their guru, because really they weren't my disciples at all. Well, there's another good one, another good one huh? Gurus and disciples. <laughs> another abstraction then they created out of nothing a whole scandal and then they used the Photoshop which I had taught them how to use on computers that I had bought for them to use in our publishing work to create a whole bunch of phony photos of my head pasted onto some pornographic pictures and to spread these all over the internet. 
Then it wasn't such a bad thing from a legal standpoint, but now it's called revenge porn, and it's a felony in a lot of places. So these things are going on. <laughs> this insanity, this inanity, this nonsense is going on all over the world and thousands of millions if not billions of examples of things, images, and pictures, and especially words that have no relation to reality whatsoever in any shape or form. This is why the vrittis lead to suffering. What is a vritti actually? Well, the Buddha defined it very nicely as a vortex, a whirlpool. And we've done several videos on vortex theory. And the reason a vortex happens, for example, in a flow of water, is that the water encounters an obstacle. And when the water flows around the obstacle, it creates a circular vortex. And that vortex has the property of sucking in things around it and pulling them down this spiral funnel, like a tornado, a tornado or a whirlwind or a sea sprout is a vortex. And it's dangerous because it sucks things in, spins them around, and spits them out the other end, often violently. So this is, this is a whirlpool. So in consciousness or in the mental world, there is an obstacle called the ego. And when the energy of life encounters this obstacle, this ego, it forms a vortex. This is a vritti. Okay, I could spend a lot of time talking about this, but I've already done it in those videos that I linked to. So what about sleep? Nidra. Nidra is when the consciousness is covered by ignorance. There are no perceptions. There are no thoughts. I'm talking about deep sleep, sushupti. And dreams are simply sleep in which memories come up. And the memories or vasanas are mental tendencies from previous lives or previous experiences. And when they come up, the mind strings them together like, like beads on a string into a kind of story. Only <laughs> some really crazy things can happen in these stories. Huh? So to me, the dreams are an endless source of entertainment. <laughs> and of course, we can have dreams during waking consciousness too. And these vikalpas, these are some of the dreams. We dream into existence a corporation, a religion, a philosophy, a country, a politic, or an economic system. And then we dream that we follow it. Huh? We dream that it's real, and then we dream that we do all these things because of it. Is there any wonder the world is full of suffering? Is there any wonder that life is so difficult and painful? Much more than it needs to be. I mean, it's already, you know, the whole birth and death thing is really painful just by itself. But then we add to it by our own nonsense, our delusions, our sleep and our dreams, which are all vrittis. Simply, they are vortexes in the stream of life caused by the obstacle of the ego, which is a kind of clinging. Huh? Just like if someone, Buddha uses this example, if someone falls into a raging stream, you know, during spring melting season when the glaciers cause huge floods to come down the mountain uh, valleys, if you fall into that stream, you're a goner. Huh? 
The rocks are all covered with moss and you can't hold on to anything. And even you try maybe to hold on to some grass or to some small branches or to whatever you can find, but it's all to no avail. Because the stream is more powerful than your grip, than your clinging. And the, the stream of life is so powerful that it eventually washes away all these obstacles. Huh? The water washes away the stone. And this is actually the function of a vortex. This is why all material concepts and creations are doomed to destruction. One should not cling to them. One should not hold to them. One should especially not base one's life and, and uh, allegiances and activities and so on on these phony abstractions. Everything based on the ego must fail because it's an obstruction in the flow of life. So when one finally lets go and just flows along with the stream. Eventually, one can reach the ocean. And when that happens, one just emerges with the totality of existence. There is no more current because one is out of the stream, out of the river now, into the ocean. And the ocean is deep. It's very deep. So. This ocean of consciousness, Brahman, is an ocean of bliss. And it's our, really, our, our constitutional nature to uh, realize this ocean and to let go and stop clinging to all these abstractions and these phony things. And this is real enlightenment. Ong Tatsa. Ong. Um.